So now I have the pleasure of introducing our international guest, Dr. Andreas Wieg, who is the director of the executive staff department at German Cooperative and Ray Feisleis. Thank you, Confederation. Head of the German Office for Energy Cooperatives. Manager of the new cooperatives working group of the German Cooperative Associations. Members of the, member of the Energy and Environment Working Group at Cooperatives Euro Europe, visiting lecturer for introductory business administration, and many more. He has a PhD in economics, a master's in business administration, and studies in business administration from Phillips University Marburg. Please come and join us. In Germany, we have, we are in the middle, we hope that we are in the middle of the energy transition. And what's interesting is that Half of the investments of the green energy in Germany were made by the citizens. 50%. <coughs> and every farmer, every company, um, every private household who, who has a, uh, which has a, um, a rooftop has a PV panel on top of this rooftop. If you drive through Germany, you see everywhere PV panels on top of churches and of, of barns, etc. Et and these investments um, were made by private people, by individual people. Yeah. Only 12%, 10% were made by the utilities. And the reason is um, they don't have access to the roofs, to the land. Okay. Yep. Oh, sorry. And on this graph, you can see what happened since 2008, 2009. Every year, more than 150 um, energy cooperatives were founded. So we have about 700 of these renewable, new renewable energy cooperatives. There are about 70, we call them traditional energy cooperatives, like um, LDCs here in Canada local uh, energy provider mm. um, so that we have in, in, in total about 800. So this development has to do with um, a special act, a special law in Germany, that's the Renewable Energy Sources Act. And it was, one version was released in 2004 that made it very easy to invest in renewable energy and this um, act, this law, has two key elements. One element is that um, we have a feed-in tariff system, system yeah, which means that um, if you invest in, in a solar panel, for instance, then you will get for 20 years, over 20 years, a guaranteed return. And the more important element is the obligation of the grid operator to buy all the electricity from this kind of plants. So if you put both things together, it's no problem to, to invest in green energy and to sell the electricity. You don't need a customer. You don't need special contracts. You only have to make a good calculation. It's a challenge to make a good calculation. Um, but it's much more easier than in, I think, in any other, in any, any other country, except Denmark, maybe. But now this, um, this law, this kind of regulation is over, because in uh, August this year, we've got an amendment to the Renewable Energy Sources Act. And now, everybody who invests in solar energy plants, for instance, bigger than 500 kilowatt peak, has to sell the electricity directly to the market. Yeah. And that's impossible. So you can't, you can't uh, sell electricity with a one megawatt plant <coughs> or go <coughs> directly to the, to the electricity stock market. That makes no sense. Um, so that's a challenge for the energy cooperatives, but we have some solutions. What's, um, yeah, some insights of this group. 
um, who are the members? Private people. So more than 90% are the inhabitants, the citizens in, in the villages, in the, in the rural areas. But we have also farmers, companies, public institutions, uh, mayors, um, churches, which are um, members in this, in this property. That's important. Especially if we talk later about the not in my backyard problem. Okay? Um, on average, in this energy cooperatives, people invested 3,000 euro, 4,500 Canadian dollar. On average, that's not much money. And on average, they get a 4% dividend. Half of the cooperatives. 300, 400 cooperatives pay a dividend, and they pay 4%. So every year, the members get, on average, 120 euros back from their investment. That's not much money. And so something, something different happened here in this kind of companies. It's, it's not the financial investment to become a member. It's something different. And we asked the board members, um, how much money um, do you need, uh, do people need to, to become a member? Yeah, and here you can see the answer. On average, the minimum share is 700 euros, or about $1,000. And you can see that 26, 30, 40, that 60% uh, of the cooperatives um, have a minimum share less than 500 euros. So everybody can join the cooperative. It's not um, restricted to the rich people. It's not the dentist from Munich. Everybody in the in the village in the region can can join. Okay. Um, we asked the the CEOs of the cooperatives in one of our journey, the service in Schiffen, sorry. Um, What's the reason why are you doing all this volunteer work? It's, it's not a professional work, it's all volunteer work to set up the cooperative and to make all the decisions and to organize all the meetings, etc. And they said, um, for us, for our um, members, it's important that we have a tool to be a part of the energy transition in our region. There's a strong motivation of the people to yes to be a part of the of the whole development journey. And they want to invest their money in energy projects. On average, three thousand euro, not much money, yeah? but there's a motivation to do this. So that's why the one reason is the promotion of renewable energies, which means um, um, you read in a newspaper, you, you see it on television, everybody's talking about energy transition. What does it mean? Wind turbines in my backyard. Okay, I'd like to be a part of it. That's the motivation. But um, there's another reason to, to become a member of a cooperative and to do all this voluntary work. That's, we call it the promotion of regional value creation. There's a very, very strong motivation of people, uh, of the people to invest their own money in projects in their region. That they can see what's happening with the money. The wind turbine is rotating. Uh, there's a solar panel on, on the roof of the church. Uh, and every morning when I drive, to my office, I can see this investment. Okay, business models of these energy cooperatives. We have three main, um, yeah, three main uh, sectors or three main, three main uh, um, things uh, energy cooperatives are doing. Uh, most of them invest in solar energy, solar energy plants. And one of, <coughs> one of these cooperatives is Friedrich Wilhelm Raiffeisen Cooperative in Bavaria. 
And this is a cooperative of the residents, of private people. And these people come together, put their money together, and they invest together in, especially in, in solar energy plants. And the, um, the advantage of the cooperative is that um, people with less money and people without a uh, suitable uh, roof, they have the possibility to, yes, to invest in a solar panel, yeah, in solar energy. That's why it makes sense to, to put it all um, together. In these projects, um, very often local craftsmen, local banks, especially cooperative banks, that's why we are so happy, these projects, yeah. cooperative banks, um, and regional project developer, different kind of service companies are involved. Yeah. And that's another thing. Yeah? People know each other. They know that the craftsman is from the region. Yeah? So they know that their money goes directly to the local economy. And people have very, very nice and very, very good ideas how to, how to support the region with investments in green energy. They have really good ideas. For instance, Friedrich Wilhelm Raiffeisen, cooperative, a part of their members, invested in a PV panel on top of the roof of the local football stadium. And as you probably know, the German soccer team won the championship this summer. <laughs> I had a presentation two weeks ago uh, with a group of Brazilians, so. <laughs> and I had a picture uh, in my presentation of the final match against Argentina, so it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the local soccer club in Großbadorf, it's a village in, in, in Bavaria, um, had the problem that the National Soccer Association said you have to have a roof for your stadium, but the local soccer club didn't have the money to finance it. And so the uh, members of the energy cooperative said, okay, we will rent the new roof, and with the return, with a part of the return on investment, we will finance the roof. So they don't get uh, a 4% dividend, they only get 1%. Uh, and the rest is uh, for the investment of this new roof. And the soccer club said, okay, um, then we give you another kind of dividend for you that's a seasonal ticket over 20 years. <laughs> they had a discussion, a seasonal ticket over 20 years or in every match a sausage. So, <laughs> okay. That's one of the very, very successful uh, um, <coughs> energy cooperatives we have. Um, it's one of the bigger ones. It's only five years old. They have 2,600 members. 2,600 members. It's a very, very small town. They invested f over 50 million dollars in the last five years in solar plants and wind turbines. You can see here. But they invested too in regional projects, for instance, in the House of Energy. You want? They bought the old brewery in their hometown, and they renovated this building, and now this is the House of Energy. It's the office of the energy cooperative. Um, there are several service companies um, in the uh, in the from, from the energy sector so if you like to uh, if you have questions about energy efficiency or if you like to build up a wind turbine you find any kind of service in this house and this house includes a kindergarten for 150 children so i don't know exactly what a kindergarten has to do with energy mm -hmm. But this is the this is the way they they invest they invest in regional in the regional value creation. You know? That's the that's the story. Yeah. 
they have uh, parking lots with solar panels on top. And this project, yeah, they invested $25 million dollars in this house, only in this house. Um, I know the, the CEO very well, and he had a lot of sleepless nights in the last three years. And this is a group of craftsmen, of local regional craftsmen, who got, yeah, 2,400 orders only for this single project. Yeah. And as you can imagine, it's not a problem. If you have a general meeting with people from the city, it's easy to convince them to invest their money in a project like this. It's only one project and it's risky, yeah. but it makes sense for them to do this. And now uh, it's the house of energy, a kindergarten, and uh, a lot of space for, for public meetings or for events, you know, like a classical concert or pop concert, or uh, for public viewing, by the way, for soccer championships. Okay. The second business model um, is district heating. So we have about 120 district heating systems where people come together in a cooperative and finance together yes, the heating system, the pipelines. So they kick out their uh, individual um, oil or gas plants, heating plants, and they connect to the, yes, to the, to the heating system, to the, to the heating grid. Um, sometimes they have their own plants, wood chip fire plants or biogas plants, and sometimes they link the pipeline to biogas plants of farmers. Um, one result of the feed-in tariffs in Germany is, system is that we have a lot of biogas plants uh, in, in the rural areas. And most of them uh, don't have a concept for the heat. 40% uh, of, the, of the energy in a biogas plant is heat, but nobody uses this. And that's why that's a good solution <coughs> to, to put the heat of the, of the biogas plant to the individual houses. But how to make contracts, how to, how to organize this? And in a cooperative, maybe you know, every member, doesn't matter how much money he invested, has only one vote in the general assembly. And people understand that if you have only one vote, um, nobody can cheat each other. So that's why um, it's very <coughs> often it's, it's the trust uh, making process of the cooperative which, um, which makes pro projects like this um, impossible. If there is a farmer, a rich farmer in a village, yeah, and, the, uh, um, and the owner of the houses, and they should make together a, a contract over 20 years, and the farmer will say, okay, I'll make you a good price, but what will happen in three years or five years? And if they are all in the same organization, yeah, then it works. Yeah. Otherwise, we have to remove from the village. Okay, so this is um, the second business model, and that's one very interesting thing is that they produce heat at lower cost. It's cheaper to do this in a common system uh, instead of um, firing with, with uh, individual uh, oil plants in the house. That's very Interesting, and one of the reasons for this is that there's a lot of volunteer work in this kind of business, and in every village you have a lorry driver and people who have machines to dig in a in, in the ground, and you have an architect and etc. And yes, and this leads to, to very, very low project development costs. 
that's one of the impacts of the of the energy cooperative or of the cooperative model. So let's get back to the <coughs> NIMBY problem. Um, we have some energy crop, energy production cooperatives, um, which invested in wind turbines. And one of these cooperatives is Energiegenossenschaft Starkenburg, close to Frankfurt in the middle of, of Germany. And in this case, the project developer started to build up this single wind turbine, only one, top of a small hill. And the inhabitants in the villages around this small hill realized, OK, there's something going on in my backyard. And they started to protest and to make demonstrations against it. And the project developer um, heard a presentation of Friedrich Wilhelm Raiffeisen Energy Cooperative, the football stadium cooperative. And he thought, OK, it's, maybe it's a good idea. I invite all the people from the village, from the villages, and let's start a cooperative. At the end, this single wind turbine costs about $5 million, and it was completely financed with equity, with the money of the people. Also. So there was no bank loan, unfortunately, no bank loan. And it was completely financed by the people also. And so the, the not in my backyard problem changed dramatically. And yes, and the reason is ownership. That's one of the lessons we've learned in, in, in Germany. If you have ownership in this plant, then you think in a different way about energy transition, the costs of the energy transition, and um, about wind turbines in your, in your, uh, yes, in, in, in your backyard. The story is very, very easy. If you stand up every morning, you look out the window and you see a wind turbine yeah, in your beautiful landscape, and it's investment of the, of an investment fund of the of the dentist in Munich. Yeah, then you are angry. angry. But if it's an investment of your cooperative, you probably not. That's a difference. Do you feel the difference here? Yeah, it, the question, is it theirs or is it mine? <laughs> Nothing has changed. In the, in the, it's very easy, or the cooperative model is a very good organizational form to bring different interests together in one company. Um, in Germany, we often have a discussion, do we need smart grids and smart technology? And sometimes the representatives of the cooperative say, no, um, the most important thing are smart people, and in our organization, we only have smart people. <laughs> and that's the moment um, that I opened the microphone and said, no, we have a lot of smart people, but um, everybody can join us. So <laughs> who, who, who is smarter than everybody? I don't understand this. The cooperative is a smart organizational structure yeah, because of this democratic um, rule and um, yes, and because of the possibility to involve a lot of people. And that's why um, it's good for coordinating different interests, the farmers and, uh, and the user, the producer and the user of the heat, for instance. Yeah, that's a different interest. If you put this together, it works. It's important to solve the not in my backyard problem, to raise the acceptance. And the reason is involvement. It's not only financial involvement. 120 euros a year is not a reason to accept a wind turbine in your backyard. It's something different. And it's the part, it's ownership, it's to be a part of the project. They uh, support the regional value added. Uh, one case with the House of Energy, you see that's a lot of money 
rotating in the region, in the cities, in the villages. A kind of social justice, everybody can join with 10 euros, with 100 euros. And the cooperative model is very, very stable, very, very sustainable, because it's focused on members' needs. In Germany, we have this audit associations, it's an additional thing. But it's a an, it's an local project. It's, it's not just an investment. It's not an, an offshore wind farm investment where people don't know where their money is working or not working. It's all close to the members, close to the, um, yes, to the houses and the uh, region where they live. Maybe you heard about the 25th anniversary of the breakdown of the wall. This was last Sunday, Sunday last week. And obviously I was there and a lot of other people in there. And this is the wall and they put a lot of lights all through the city where the, where the wall was. And yes, this is the backyard, uh, I'm sorry, the back of the backside of the um, of our parliament. The representation of Quebec is right here. And yes, we had a we had a big party there in front of the Brandenburg Gate, and thousands of people been on the street there. Thousands of people. And for me, that um, was a good reminder that um, sometimes unexpected, probably impossible things can happen yeah, if people are involved. Maybe this is it's a small uh, message, or a part of the message of these cooperative, energy cooperatives in the energy transition. It's very important that um, people can join, people can understand what it means, energy transition. And I'd like to add one thing. Our friend from Belgium, Dirk van Sintien, Johan, uh, founded in the early 90s an energy cooperative in Belgium and they have now 50,000 members 50,000 members and this cooperative is on the one hand energy producer and on the other hand they provide energy directly to their members to the customers and people for, for this members Electricity, electricity gets a kind of quality. People think about electricity in a different way. And in the last six years, the members, 50,000 members of this cooperative, reduced their electricity consumption for 50%. 50% in six years. And this is not because of the financial investment. This is not because of the cooperative. This is because they are part of the project. Yeah? They think about energy transition. They think about what can we do next. And that's why I think this has to do a little bit with this one here. Thank you. <laughs>